I can't tell you uh, how sad I feel the way that Prince is being portrayed yeah. in this series. It's totally, totally unfair. Season four of Netflix's smash hit The Crown has enthralled audiences around the world as the relationship between the Prince of Wales and Princess Diana blossoms, then spectacularly collapses. The season is particularly unflattering for Prince Charles, with actor Josh O'Connor playing His Royal Highness as a stooping, jealous, and overall rather unpleasant character. They should say at the start of that series, this is a, a drama based on the royal family. Nothing to do, this is not the actual things that happen, but this is what it's based on. Arthur Edwards is the son's royal photographer. He spent more than 40 years covering the palace and was there behind the lens from the beginning of the Prince of Wales and Diana's relationship. I first saw Diana at a polo match in uh, 1980. I'd gone there on a Saturday and it was a small little polo field and I was told that he was, he brought her with him. And I looked around this polo field not having a clue what she looked like and I found this quite pretty young girl and she was wearing a necklace with a D on it and I thought well, that must be her. So I said, excuse me, are you Lady Diana Spencer? She said, yes. I said, can I take a photograph please? She said, yes, and she posed up like this for me. And I thought that was strange because most of the girlfriends would run a mile if you said that. So I checked with the library and found out she'd just had her 19th birthday and so I kind of disregarded it really. I didn't think he'd be running around with teenagers. And then about six weeks, maybe five or six weeks later, I was up at Balmoral going to the Highland Games and I saw Prince Charles fishing uh, in the River Dee and with him was Diana, dressed as a ghillie, uh, like a, a, a fisherman's helper. And, uh, and I figured that was it, it was, a, it was going, it was a runner and, uh, and we splashed it, you know, he's in love again and under my picture that I did of her going like this, we put the front page of the sun, uh, Lady Diana Spencer, all the qualities to be queen. And then I photographed her at the nursery and everybody accuses me of putting her in front of the, uh, the, with the sunlight shining through her dress. Halfway through taking those pictures, the sun came out and that, that's when the picture happened. I never planned that, it was just a bit of luck. We, we put that on the front of the paper, Charlie's Girl, and almost less than a year later they were married. And I, and, I, and I was getting to like her, and, we, and most of the pack were getting to like her. You know, she was fresh-faced and, 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 and quite sweet. And we said to the prince, um, you know, how much we like Lady Diana Spencer. And, and he said to me, he said, very interesting, he said, you could get married, you could live with a girl for two years and get to know each other. I can't. He said, I've got to get it right first time. Or were you, and he meant collectively, the media, will be the first to criticise me. And they were profound words because at the time we, you know, we took no notice of it. We just thought he was just being smart. But in fact, he was being very much a visionary. After a four month engagement, the royal couple were married in July, 1981. In spring, 1983, they embarked on their first royal tour to Australia and New Zealand. A pivotal moment in the series as Diana's popularity skyrockets and the couple are shown locked in almost constant conflict. Arthur was there, he remembers it a little differently. That was a love tour, they were all, they, were, they couldn't stop touching each other, they were looking at each other with great love in their eyes. And to suggest that straight after that, they returned from that, he went to see Camilla, it's, it's a lie. I mean, it's just not true and people think it is true. You know, people are building up this picture of it was a very unhappy marriage. Well, it wasn't at the beginning. Arthur remembers Diana's popularity being clear with both the people in Australia and the picture editors of Fleet Street. The crowds were huge. And of course, it was Diana they'd come to see. And of course, we were there for Diana. I mean, we couldn't send a picture back to London without Diana being in it. And I remember the press officer at the time um, saying, to, would someone please cover the prints? And I said, Vic, we can't, you know, we, we, we can't. But whether the Prince of Wales was as uncomfortable with the attention she received as his character in The Crown is, he's not so sure. The fact that the Prince of Wales was jealous of, of Diana, I, I imagine he thought about it, but I don't think he, he was that upset about it. I mean, he couldn't have been surprised. I mean, she was a stunning looking woman. I remember going to Silverstone, the racetrack with the prince, and uh, a little boy came up to him and said, oh, Charlie, where's Diana? And he said, I'm afraid she's not coming today, son. You'll have to ask for your money back. 
And, uh, and of course, he made reference to it in a speech in Australia. He said, you know, I, I should have two wives. They could walk along both sides and I could just walk down the middle. And he, he made a joke of it. So it was, look, obviously, it would have, he would have thought about it, but I don't think he was, I don't think he was openly hostile about it, not at all. I think he's not that sort of a person. He's, uh, he's, he's very understated. What is true is that Diana was undeniably different to the rest of the royal family. She broke the mould. I mean, no, certainly. I mean, when Diana came along, you'd never see a member of the royal family pick up a baby and, or sit on the bed of a patient. Never did things like that. But I remember Diana sitting on a bed holding a leper's hand in, 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 in Nigeria and had fingers missing. I remember her holding a baby with HIV in Brazil. I can't tell you, she was an amazing lady. But her public persona was at odds with a private struggle, an eating disorder, bulimia, which Arthur remembers became noticeable through the lens of his camera even before the couple were married. Diana, when I first photographed her, she was, I suppose, a normal weight for a girl of her age and height. But um, in that year, she lost an awful lot of weight. And I remember doing a photograph in them, leaving St Paul's after the rehearsal and she looked painfully thin. And I remember the headline in, the, in our paper, on the front page, it said, please don't lose any more weight, Diana. During their first trip together down under, Arthur remembers the princess's weight loss was noticeable again. I photographed her with an off the shoulder dress. And she was wearing this necklace as a, as a kind of headband in emeralds. It was an amazing picture. And you look at her sort of shoulders and you can see the bones protruding from her shoulders. And you could see these lines in her face and you knew that was something wrong. And it was bulimia and, um, and the prince got the best people possible to help her with that. Now that's not gonna be in Netflix. Central to the new season's plot is a love triangle between the Prince of Wales, Princess Diana and the now Duchess of Cornwall, Camilla Parker Bowles. The details of which Arthur says only they can be sure of the truth of. Who knows? Who committed adultery first? No, but only the two in the marriage know that. And one of them is no longer with us. Uh, Prince Charles will never speak about that, ever. Uh, his love for Camilla has never stopped. We now know that. But, you know, the Prince of Wales is a very honourable man. And, you know, he would, have, he would have had great cause to actually go and do, to, to, to break his marriage vows. He would have, it would have had to be pretty serious for him, to, in my view, to do that. And, and, <clears throat> and the princess, similarly, you know, she had <clears throat> several affairs. Most of them are documented. I don't want to go and list them all because I don't really want to do that. Mm -hmm. But um, she was, uh, you know, she was, she had her moments too. The season ends on Diana's successful trip to New York. By this point in the show, the two are at each other's throats. But although there were rumours of disquiet behind closed doors, Arthur says he didn't see these private problems made public until their final tour together in 1992. Only till we went to Korea, with that last tour, uh, when it was obvious that they didn't want to be with each other, they were just so miserable together. That's when I noticed how bad it was. Up to then, I have to, I have to, I have to assure you, they, they were, they were doing a pretty good job. They were doing a great job for the country. It was never, it was never visible. People were uh, wondering if it was not, if it was great. There were stories about other men and, and there were stories about him with Camilla, but we never saw it actually in everyday events that they were doing until we got to Korea. And then, uh, and then questions started to get asked. And after that, they, I think a month after that, uh, they, they separated. So. That was the only real time in all their public duties that we saw that there was, um, the marriage was in trouble. Arthur hopes that in future, the series writers will give the Prince and the Duchess of Cornwall more credit for their service to the country. His devotion to duty is unparalleled. I mean, he even postponed his wedding to Camilla, put it back 24 hours so he could attend the Pope John Paul's funeral in Rome. Um, and now, right, you might say, well, it's easy for him to do, but he did it. And um, that's because it's duty. And there's so many things like that. I mean, even during the lockdown, he flew to Kuwait to, on behalf of the Queen when the, when the ruler in Kuwait died and, and, and paid his respects to the family there. And he was only on the ground maybe three or four hours, but to do that, 
it's duty, and 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 he does it. He does it, and he does it without any moaning or any. He just it's his, it's his role in life. And what really annoys me about the the series is that there's no there's no reference to the great works he's done. I mean, is the Crown going to go to the Amazon rainforest where he's pleaded with presidents of that country to stop ripping up this precious resource? Is, is he going to uh, Krakow in Poland where through his efforts he raised four million pounds uh, to get uh, a centre built for the Jewish people there? They're not going there either. Will he, will he interview some of the young people from the Prince's Trust who he's helped over a million youngsters turn their lives around and do great things with their lives? Will they go there? I doubt it very much. I don't think they're interested in that. They're only interested in the story of him and Diana.